If you're a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor, I'm getting ready to plug you in the funding on more than one count. But before we do that, I want to welcome you to the show, especially if this is your first time to the show. Welcome to Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And my lands, when it comes to talking about private money, the guest that I've got here on the show today is going to blow you up. He's a dear friend of mine, lives right here in North Carolina. But before I bring my guest on, I want to tell you all I've got a free gift for you. And that is I've got a free online chaos that actually talks about private money and how you can get plugged into it. And you can go check that out after the show. And I'm going to put it right up here for those of you that are viewing. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Well, if you're new to the show, we talk about all things real estate investing here. We talk about single family houses. We talk about commercial. We talk about land. We also talk about the real estate that you must own in between your ears before you can really own any real estate out here. We talk about how to find deals, fund deals, sell deals, how to automate the business and everything in between. Well, on with the show, folks. I'm so excited to have a very, very good friend of mine. In fact, this friend that I've got here on the show with us today, we first got to know each other. Now, I want to say it's been about 10 years ago. We were attending a, a mastermind group with other real estate investors down in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. But before I give you his name, let me just tell you a little bit about this person. And you're not going to want to go anywhere during this show, I promise you. My friend has been investing in real estate since he was 19 years old and really he's done it all. Well, he's really not old enough to have done it all, but he has <laughs> done it all. I mean, he's done it all when it comes to real estate investing. In fact, he's actually too young to be as wealthy as he is. But anyway, he's completed and been a part of countless hundreds of millions of dollars in residential, commercial. He's done the fix and flip. He's done the wholesale deals. He's done the buy deals. He's done notes. He's made a killing flipping or uh, developing land. So he knows how to develop, you know, be a developer on this end. Anyway, he's just a guy that has got a very, very rare talent. And here's what I mean. He's really a techie, okay? Which, you know, I'm not going to comment much on that because I'm for sure not a techie but he's made the name in this industry as the go-to guy on creating platforms and software and tools for real estate investors. So he's raised, he's invested millions of his own dollars into the tech companies. So anyway, my good friend, he is CEO of connectedinvestors.com. This is an investment property marketplace that I can tell you all about because I've been a member of it for the past, well, right at 10 years. And this network that he has created is a social network for real estate investors. And right now, ConnectedInvestors.com has got close, listen folks, close to a million members. So several years ago, my friend launched this private funding portal that actually blew up the entire real estate investing industry here in the United States. This platform, which I have used myself, this portal facilitates over 3 billion, that's with a B, over $3 billion a month, a month in funding for real estate investors. So anyway, I can't say enough about my friend. Welcome to the show, my friend, Ross Hamilton. Welcome, Ross. Hey, thank you so very much for that fantastic introduction. You're really good at this, man. It's awesome well. that you're doing this podcast. You, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was... That was fantastic. I'm excited to hear what I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be good. I'm excited to hear what you have to say too as well. Yes. So, so yeah, Ross, uh, everybody, uh, Ross is a fellow North Carolinian. He's down in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is only about, oh, 90 minutes or so <laughs> from where I'm at here in Moorhead City. As you can see, for those of you that are able to watch, of course, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube, we're on Roku, many other platforms. For those of you that are videoing, you can see Ross has now moved in a recently a few months ago into this massive uh, you're right on the right on the water down there on front street 
Yeah, yeah, right here in Front Street. In Wilmington. So anyway, uh, Ross, I, I know my audience is dying to hear about all this funding that you've been able to facilitate. Mm -hmm. But uh, take us for a moment, take us for a moment back to when you were 19 years old. How in the world at 19 years old did you get involved in real estate investing? Tell me the story that began it all. Yeah, well, it, uh, it all started when I broke my leg. I used to be a... Uh, one of those BMX guys. I used to compete in contests all around the United States. Actually, the Michael Jordan of BMX lived in Wilmington, North Carolina when I was about 15 years old. So I got to hang out with the best. And that's, that's kind of when I realized that the people you surround yourself with really you know, help you become the person that you can be, right? Whether it's business or sports, by hanging out with, uh, with Dave Mira every day, I got really good at riding my bike at a very young age. And I competed all around the United States. I even had my own BMX clothing company. I sponsored kids. We had a Volkswagen van. We'd go to contests all around the, all around the, the country. And that was going to be my life. So I was kind of all in. Anything I do, I'm all in. And I wound up uh, breaking my leg really bad. I was in a cast for over a year. And when I came back, I just, uh, I don't know, I kind of lost something. I felt like I kind of miss, miss, missed the train of that part of my life. So I had to figure out how to make money. And the internet wasn't really around then. It was, but it was not what it is today. So I went to Barnes and Noble and I just started going through the books at Barnes and Noble. And I stumbled across a book about real estate investing and it said 80% of millionaires made their first million through real estate. So I said, I'm not the smartest guy, but uh, I'm going to play the odds. So I decided to kind of jump into real estate, just like I would uh, jump into BMX, and I surrounded myself with the best possible people I could find, and just just went for it. And it was during a uh, really exciting time in the real estate market during that big upswing. So I was able to do very, very good, very, very quickly, and a market very similar to today's market. Um, actually, I developed some land out uh, in your neck of the woods, out in Jacksonville. Okay. It was uh, yeah, it was it was a pre foreclosure. I was knocking on doors, Jay. I didn't have any of this fancy software. Uh, I didn't have anyone's phone number. So if I saw a potential deal, I'd go knock on the door. I asked this lady if she wanted to sell her house. She said she didn't, but she had all the land across the street. So I bought the land uh, from her across the street, developed it out, and made a uh, lot of money on that, on that deal and actually used that to fund connected investors. So that's kind of how I, uh, why I found real estate and uh, it's a little bit about me. Well, you mentioned connected investors and, you know, let's go ahead and talk about connected investors for a little bit. So how did real, uh, connected investors get started and really what is it all about? Yeah, great question. So as I was investing in real estate at 19, 20, 21 years old, it was, it was easy to see the most successful people were often the most well-connected people. So the more people I knew, the more connected I was, the easier it was for me to put together the pieces of my real estate investing puzzle. At the time, Facebook was only for a few colleges and LinkedIn, you know, sucked <laughs> even worse than it does today, right? It, was, it just didn't work. So I said, you know what? I'm going to build my own platform that's just for real estate investors. So it just happened very organically just to kind of solve a problem. How can I be connected with more real estate investors? And what would happen is I kept, I didn't understand what a technology company was. It's, I just knew that if I met the right people, I'd make more money. So through meeting people on my platform and flipping deals or buying deals, I took the profits from those deals and reinvested it back into the platform. So I was seeding my own kind of tech company. And then it just started to kind of take off because other people had the same problem I did. And they found a lot of value in it. And it's just been growing like, uh, growing like crazy ever since. Well, let me just go ahead and share with you and my audience how relevant and current your platform is right now. So let me tell you a story. So, you know, most of my audience knows I've been investing here in Eastern North Carolina for 15 years. And my wife, Carol Joy, and I, right now we've got 48 private lenders, individuals who are funding our deals. And, you know, nothing's easier and faster than doing business with individuals, you know, not hard money lenders, individuals. And so about six weeks ago, this is how recent this happened, Ross. About six weeks ago, I had a deal on the contract to close and I had my private lender already, you know, lined up to wire the money, done business with this private lender, you know, many, many times. 
And long story short, an emergency came up on their end and they were not able to wire the funds. Mm. And here I am down to the wire to, to close the deal. And of course, you've been a friend of mine for years, but I thought to myself, in fact, it was about 10 o'clock at night. I was, <laughs> I was sitting in my sunroom watching TV, starting to wind down. And I had just gotten off the phone from my private lender saying, I'm sorry, Jay, I've had this issue come up and I'm not going to be able to wire the funds. Now, I've got other money sitting on the sidelines. But I said, you know what? I've never, you know, as many years as I've known you, I've never checked out your platform. And I said, I just want to see what'll happen. So I go there to connectedinvestors.com. <laughs> and then here comes your portal, privatelenders.com. I go there and I click on there. And so it asked me a few short questions. And, you know, so ask me about myself, you know and ask me about, you know, the property, et cetera. So it was asking about a specific property. So I had this specific property, you know, that I had in mind, et cetera. So I hit submit, you know, I filled out all the information probably in about two minutes, as I recall, sitting there in the sunroom on my laptop, I hit submit. So immediately I start receiving emails Thank you, you know, for contacting us. So, you know, your platform is like, you know, this magical octopus that's like, <laughs> that's like connected to all these, you know, funding sources. And, you know, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I'm going to have a bunch of hard money lenders now reaching back out to me, wanting to charge me, you know, 12 and 14 percent and four points and, and all that mess that I teach against. And so I get a phone call the next morning at 9 a.m. from this guy named Paul in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> and this is at nine o'clock the next morning after I've filled out your form online. And so very nice gentleman, Paul called. He says, hey, uh, I got the information from you from, um, you know, the Connected Investors and the PrivateLenders.com platform. And I see the deal you're wanting to fund. Um, I'd like the opportunity to fund it for you. And so first of all, I'm thinking, I can't believe I've gotten a phone call <laughs> at 9 a.m. after I filled out the information at 10 p.m. But I'm, I got my seatbelt on. I'm going, oh, no, here comes, you know, the 12 and 14 percent and the four points and all that stuff. So we start chatting. And Paul says, well, I'd like to do business with you. He says, uh, and so I said, well, may I ask you a few questions? So he said, sure. I said, well, first of all, let's talk interest rate. You know, what's your range of interest rate? He says, well, you know, we're most of the time we're in between, you know, five, six, seven percent, sometimes eight percent. And I'm going, you got my attention because I think <laughs> there's more money than that. And uh, so then we started talking. I said, well, do you refinance deals? He said, yeah, we refinance deals. And I'm going, okay. So long story short, after me sitting there just sort of saying, wonder what happens if I fill out Ross Hamilton's thing, <laughs> you know? So I had, I had over 10 contact me within 24 hours of the 10 in six weeks. I've already done business with four of those lenders from your platform and their interest rates are less than I pay my private lender individuals. So you got a fantastic platform and it was just really, really, I mean, Hey, you've been my friend for 10 years, but it was really somewhat of a surprise to the types of uh, lenders that you all have been able to put in place in your platform. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks for uh, sharing that experience with you. And that's why we're able to, we're able to get you the best rate in turn because they know they're competing against each other. So they cut through all the BS if you had just went to their website directly, they'd be like, okay, great. Let's see what we got here, you know? But our lenders know that they need to provide the borrowers who go through privatelenders.com with their bottom line best rate. And it's, it's so awesome. It's, it's, uh, I can never hear that story enough time because yeah. prior to what we've done uh, with this portal, private lending is, was uh, kind of dangerous in a lot of ways, people get yeah. scammed, ripped off, but we verify all of our lenders and we, we take that very seriously. So th thanks for sharing that with all your members. Yeah, absolutely. And so with that, you know, Ross, whether we're out there wholesaling or we're flipping or we're buying and holding, 
it doesn't matter what our exit strategy is. We, as the real estate investing entrepreneurs, we got to find the deal, right? We yeah. got to find the deals. Yeah. And you know, so this is going to be an interesting answer on your part because you know, your background is, is so tech and internet and stuff. What are your favorite ways to be really finding the hot deals right now? The hot deals today, number one, they have to be off market. I don't, I don't really understand as far as your, your viewers, you know, as far as their education goes, if you're brand new, you might be thinking, Hey, I'm going to go to the MLS and start bidding. But it's very, very challenging there because real estate is so hot right now that retail buyers are coming in, institutional buyers are coming in, people that watch Jay's podcast are coming in. Everyone is, is flooding any of those easy to find deals. So the answer is you have to find the hard to find deals is kind of the, uh, is, where the, is where the magic lies now and or have the ability to do some creative deal making and creative deal structuring to find gems that other people might not realize are deals. Well, you're exactly right. In the past six months, I have bought, I can only think of one. I've only bought one house out of the multiple listing service. Yeah. One house. And so, you know, like with myself, you know, one uh, source that I use, my wife and I started putting together 15 years ago. I mean, you know, so anyway, it doesn't matter. The bottom line is all of like 90% of my deals I buy are not in the multiple listing service. Yeah. So, so let's talk about two different subjects that are under that topic, Ross. One is what are the different categories of potentially motivated real estate investors mm -hmm. could we target? And then after we talk about that and we can talk about what your favorite categories yeah. of potentially motivated sellers are after that, then let's talk about, well, what are the ways that you can find those once you've identified the types you want? First, Great. let's start with the categories. Yeah. So the cool thing is the, the ultimate answer is a blend of these categories, right? So you can go after uh, vacant properties, properties that are just sitting there. No one lives there. A vacancy is typically there's some sort of a problem somewhere, right? Inherited properties. Anyone who has inherited a property, typically their next order of business is to sell the property and they want to do it in, a, in, a, in an easy way. You have bank owned properties and uh, pre foreclosures that aren't yet listed. So to be able to find those people that are financially motivated, whether it's an individual who is facing some sort of foreclosure or it's a, it's a bank who has a property but it hasn't hit the MLS yet, those are really good. Also, uh, properties that are going to go for auction, pre-auction properties are really, uh, are really hot right now. And those are kind of like the, the categories, but then there's, there's ways to make those deals even better. For instance, you can filter all of those deals by owners who live out of town. So if you have a vacant or a pre-foreclosure that is, is empty and the owner lives out of town, now that's, there's a lot of motivation there. They're literally just waiting for a phone call. If it's a pre foreclosure and the person lives out of town, they've already left, they've already left the property. So being able to kind of stack motivation to say, Hey, I want a vacant probate with an out of town owner that's been vacant for three years, right? This property needs to be sold. The property I live in, that's the exact, you know, filter set that it was, you know, this, this lady inherited the property. It was her father's property. She, held on to it for a while, didn't want to let go of it kind of right away. She had some sentimental value, but we, uh, we contacted her at the right time and she's like, yeah, it's, it's time to get rid of it. So understanding kind of the different, different deal sources, you know, you have the different deal sources and the motivation layers and being able to kind of stack those is how you would kind of like pinpoint the, the best deals there. The biggest challenge there, if you can figure out how to, how to, find just those great deals, then you have to find the owner. So the challenge is to first figure out what are the best deals? How do I figure out what, what the addresses are? And then, and then how do I find the owners? That is essentially the puzzle that once you solve, you can just be up and running very, very quickly. Speaking of the word connected investors, are you by chance connected with your favorite skip trace company that can locate 
you know, these people where they live, their phone numbers. There's all kinds of skip trace companies out there, but you know, you being the tech savvy person you are, you connected with anybody on that? Yeah. Yeah. We have, uh, we actually personally bought every single person's contact info in the U S so we can be that, uh, we can be that provider. It's kind of scary that you can just buy that. Right. right. You type in an address it says, is this Jay Connor? Yeah, there you go. Oh, here's your phone number, your email. Here's what your occupation, like the data that you can buy now is, is crazy. And that's, but for some reason, real estate has, has been really far behind to take advantage of this. So we're kind of in this golden age right now to where they're still old school to where people are on the outside. The, the average everyday person can't really figure it out. But it's easy enough that if you want to figure it out, you can, and you just have like a green light to where you can say, all right, show me all the vacant pre foreclosures with out of town owners and give me all their phone numbers. And then you don't have to knock on doors. Like I was telling you, I used to do, you're just picking up your phone and calling people up and some people are, will answer. Some people won't, but you're only one answer away from, you know, your first or next flip. So, yeah. you know, we're at a really exciting time in technology right now. Yeah. Ross, I'm sure you're familiar with Collective Genius. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mastermind. I've been in that mastermind with Jason and, and his team for a couple of years. You know, high, high end real estate investors, you know, they're doing at least 50 deals a year or more. And so what I've been hearing up until about, I want to say maybe about a year ago, until about a year ago, everything was still direct mail. Everything mm -hmm. was direct mail. And that doesn't mean people haven't been door knocking and that doesn't mean people haven't been picking up the phone calling, you know, all this time as well. But it just seems to me from my observation and listening to a lot of people talk, it seems to me that there is a movement that is gravitating towards more outbound calling using, you know, mojo dialers and all this type of stuff. Are you hearing the same thing? What are you hearing out there as to people's, you know, preferred way of communicating or getting people to respond. Yeah. Well, the thing is like, why would you send direct mail and you can send a direct message? A direct message is, doesn't cost anything really to do. Direct mail is very expensive. Now I am a huge advocate of direct mail. I made my first million in real estate. I would send direct mail and I would knock on doors. I'd send direct mail and I'd put up bandit. Cause I'd, I'd get the list from the courthouse, which was very labor intensive. I'd send out the mail. Then I would go knock on the doors and if they answered, I'd talk to them. If they didn't, I'd put a, we buy houses sign right outside their door. So they walk <laughs> like, why is that sign there? Right? <laughs> so just like back then I was doing it all today, you have to, you have to do it all. You know, it's, but yes, the answer is people are automating the, the outbound dialing and connecting, you know, to the, to these individuals. So doing them in tandem is, is always best sending out some direct mail, following up. Hey, I sent you, uh, I sent you a postcard the other day. Did, did you see that? Or, you know, having those, those two pieces of information there are, are important because sometimes, I mean, direct mail is inefficient, but sometimes you got the wrong phone number and somehow that piece of mail makes it gets forwarded the right five times and makes it to the person. So the answer is yes. You have, you have to do both of it, both. But what's great is if you, if you're on a budget and you just want to hustle, you can hustle on the phone for free. <laughs> um, which is, yeah, which is, which is nice. Actually the uh, mastermind you're in, we, we allow real estate investors to work out of our office here. And one of the gentlemen in our, uh, is also in that mastermind as well. So anyway, yeah, he's, he's always telling me about some of the advancements and he, and he does all that on a daily basis. And we sit down with our software next to his software and we're constantly uh, updating, uh, you know, the, the deal finding software that we have to be the solution to where it's here are the deals, here are the filters, here are the phone numbers, and it's all in one spot. So you can just open up CI, connect to investors and just find the deals, fund the deals, flip the deals. But you know, we, we got really heavy into helping real estate investors solve the deal finding problem because believe it or not, it's getting harder and harder to find real estate investors that need funding because it's getting harder and harder to find deals. Right. So to, keep, to keep our funding portal growing, we have to help people find more deals because the lenders right now, they're fighting over deals. Just like you heard with Jay, he had four or five of them calling up and he said, yes, yes. And he said, no, no, no. Yes. You know, they're fighting over deals. Private money is still pouring into real estate and supply and demand is just not there. The amount of available private money to the amount of deals is, you know, 
has teetered the other way. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a good problem right now. I mean, right now, as of today, I've got about round figures, $500,000 sitting on the shelf, just waiting to be used. And so, you know, I've learned the hard way in the past years. I say, look, man, or look, lady, I got you in the queue. Yeah. You know, you're next, you know, and then you've got the referrals going on. Like just last week, this lady calls up my office. She's heard what I pay my private lenders. I've never met this lady in my life. And one of my staff members tells her my program is to what I pay private lenders. She says, okay, put me down for a hundred thousand. How fast can you use it? You know, I mean, the, the money's there. It's like you say, it's the finding of the deals. I, I will say this though, just because we see every private lender, every hard money lender, the, the under hundred thousand dollar range is a very challenging. Yes range because most yeah. lenders don't want to deal with under a hundred thousand because it's just as much work for them to do a hundred thousand dollar loan as it is a five hundred thousand dollar loan that's right and my real estate attorney charges me the same thing to buy a hundred thousand dollar property as it does to buy a five hundred thousand dollar property you know <laughs> yeah so exactly. that's really but having those local individuals that you can call up that just want to invest fifty sixty seventy thousand dollars is nice to have but also just just think about this for anyone who's getting into it saying, hey, I want to start with cheaper houses. If these lenders aren't doing the, the more affordable, the under $100,000 houses, because the economics don't work, you can probably take a little lesson from that. And maybe you should step up your game into the quarter million dollar you know, number. Because let's, let's face it, if you default on a $100,000 note, it's the same thing as if you default on a $250,000 note. So depending on your markets, what you're doing, you know, it could be good to kind of go bigger, but everyone, everyone has their niches. You know, someone yeah. in Wilmington here, they focus on $60,000 section eight houses. They buy five or 10 of them at a time. You know, they're getting them for 60, they're renting them for a thousand to 1200 a month. Huge ROIs there. But just depending on the type of financial freedom that you're trying to create for yourself. Exactly. Well, Ross, I'll tell you, when it comes to all the providers out there for the real estate investing industry, I don't know anybody else in my network of business colleagues and friends that has the number of tools that for real estate investors to use. And as importantly, you always stay on the cutting edge as to what's the latest, you know, what's the greatest, what's faster, what's cheaper, what's more efficient. You're always coming out with it. So since this show is going to be out there forever and ever and ever, I'm in, what's the best way for my audience to connect with you and your team to take advantage of all the resources that you have to help them be successful? Yeah, well, uh, Connected Investors, if you're on your mobile phone, download the app. The app is awesome because you can see all the other investors in your town and you can see the investment properties in your area. So you know, we're pushing the online platform, connectinvestors.com is great. Uh, the app is just kind of completely next level. And because the app knows where you are, it's showing you investment properties near you. It's showing you other lenders and everything you need. It's like a 24 hour RIA, right? <laughs> Which was, I mean, I got, I got my start at the, uh, at the local RIA. I needed to meet people. I went, I went to the local RIA and it's, it's great to be able to pull it up and see that. So download the Connected Investors app. If you're not into apps, Go to connectinvestors.com and you can you know, find all these different resources that we've, uh, we've talked about. That's awesome. Well, Ross, we're out of time for the show, but uh, parting comments from you. Parting comments. Right now is such an exciting time to be a real estate investor. If, if you're on the sidelines, you got to jump in. If, if you're already in there running, you got to run a little faster. We got to take advantage of this, this perfect time where technology and real estate have kind of come together to where, like I said earlier, if you, if you do just a little bit of research, which your, your people do, obviously, if you're on this podcast and you just implement just a little bit, you're so far ahead. In another five or 10 years, all the data will be, there'll be nothing that's un, not available to everyone. So this is kind of a, a golden age for, uh, for real estate investors to take advantage of technology to accelerate what they're doing. That's awesome. Ross, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to be here on the show. So everybody, it's a no brainer. Download the app, Connected Investors, the website, connectedinvestors.com. And what a breath of fresh air. So Ross, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you at one of our events very, very soon. I got to get down yeah. to Wilmington and see uh, your new show place. It's down there on Front Street. So with that, 
Everybody, I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. Bye for now.